This is Andrew Wolfson from the Fiercely Independent Network. I'm at the Kleinart James Art Center for the Filmmakers Panels. You know, several hundred people have gone to get copies of the film, but then the films are hard, to, they're never shown, it's not like somebody goes home and just watches it with their family. It's, they have community rooms where there's a TV and a DVD player. And so people get together and watch it together, which is actually re really important because then they talk about it and it's, it's, so they don't see it in isolation. Um, but yeah, speaking of you know precise measurements, th that's hard. Yeah. You know, it's, we we can only estimate, uh, but we know we know that it's out there and it's having an impact. And our you know people like Matilde and other Guatemalan um, indigenous leaders tell us how much they use the the media. Honestly, my approach was as a filmmaker and as a storyteller. So as much advocacy work was done on the film and as much advocacy work that I did after finishing the film and as much impact that it had, my approach throughout was um, I'm a filmmaker, I tell stories. And everything is subordinate to story, to character, story, plot, and so forth. So for instance, um, so as I would continue to approach and it took two years to make the film, um, I knew that it was going to have an impact. I knew that, that animals would be saved, uh, mindsets would be changed, children would be saved, all kinds of things like this. But my focus, I thought it was more appropriate and important, was to the art and to the craft and to storytelling. There, at one point in the film, there's a congressman that says it's the power of uh, righteous rage that drives this, that drives you. And I think at the base of many of these uh, socially impactful documentaries is essentially a righteous rage. Because we, you know, we do not accept these situations of injustice, right? Yes. So I think that provides a motor for us, uh, for many of us as filmmakers. So for us, I mean, this we, we started our company, our art film company, and went into documentary filmmaking close to about 17 years ago. And the purpose of why we went into it um, was really to affect um, social or, or political change. I mean, we, we wanted to take on topics that we felt um, were important, that weren't being addressed in a certain way. We wanted to shed light on issues where we felt there was a grave injustice. And over the years, those, those are the types of topics that we've, we've tended to focus on. And this, this film in particular, um, we, we got very involved with, with everyone involved in, in the making of this film, and Jerry and Mike, um, really uh, in, in terms of trying to affect change and trying to move um, politicians to understand what was going on here and really hold the military accountable. And I think that's a, a great question, and um, I think there are two ways about it. One is if there is something that is personal to you, it's a great way, it's, a, it's an issue or a story or something that, that uh, is important to you, and then I think it would be uh, seeking out that story, that character, that example that might be worth exploring so that uh, you can then, through a documentary or otherwise, um, tackle that issue that already you that already you feel strong about right now today you just don't know what the story is that would exemplify that yet but I tended to back into mine in a different way um, my past two films in that um, I happen to believe that these stories are all around us like we would tend to think maybe it's like oh man you struck gold with that you struck gold with this and how did you find it how did you find it because they're rare and everything. And I don't think that that's actually the case. I think that regardless of where you are, what kind of, what age you are, um, gender, what situation that you're in, anything, that believe it or not, I happen to believe that these stories are all around us. It's just a matter of being, unfortunately, savvy enough to be able to identify it and see it for what it is. And in fact, I think that they blow past us every day. And occasionally what will happen and, uh, is um, if you're looking for it, and, and if you're looking for certain types of elements and everything, you'll see it while it just blows past everybody else. You'll look at it and go, what is that? Well, everyone, no one else is paying attention. One primary way that documentaries impact an audience is by telling a good story, a story that people feel empathy for, that they'll feel empathy for uh, a whole people, perhaps, or characters that are in the, the, in the film that represent a, a larger story. You want uh, these stories to be universal so that people in other parts of the world can connect to the story. 
And I think when that connection is made through the story, you know, the documentary has impact. And especially, it's really important to have the voices uh, in, the, in the documentary that are not normally heard. The voices of, especially, like say, we've made several documentaries with indigenous people in Latin America. And that, you know, is a platform that they don't usually have access to. And so it's giving them a chance to tell their story the way they see it. For more, visit WoodstockFilmFestival.com.